Welcome back to Raspberry on a Boat, the dashboard. Last time we discussed already um, how to integrate a webcam and a picture with a template node and we took some water levels from Pegel Online. Today we want to take a look at windy.com and take an iframe of windy.com which is pretty easy and nice and we will take a look at tables, how to grab data and put it in a table format. Let's go! So this is windy.com, like Windfinder, it offers a nice illustration of wind direction and if you go in the menu, now this is German, but you will find widget on page, embed widget on page. And when you use this nice option, you can define your own iframe. So an iframe is something you can embed and you can define this by having a width and a height and you can even define which units the wind should show. You can zoom in, it will already um, change latitude and longitude what you need to see this frame. I changed units now and you can even set some further options. And then there's already a link you can copy to your clipboard and then it's really really easy with node red we did this last time by using a template node and again we can use the template node for this so we take a template node we open this now you can decide if you keep the diff header for css style sheets i keep this one but you can remove uh, everything else and just paste the iframe condition here and the iframe already has all the information necessary and when we put this in and we deploy it, oh, you have, of course, also to define where should the template be seen. So your group for the dashboard, take whatever you like here from our last time um, and deploy it. And let's take a look. And you can see there is already our Windy dashboard. And that's really nice because Windy has a great illustration, as I said. Of course, we can all change the width for the dashboard, um, can change the layout and uh, create it like we want to have it. By the way, Windy also offers an API. Uh, we dealt with APIs last time already. When you use an API, um, you can even set some overlays, put your own icons on top and so on. But this is a single tutorial um, so this time we will just embed uh, it like this uh, it is always good if you lock the size because if you set it to auto it can be that it's cropped so we did several things we did like this one here embed uh, picture we had the levels with a rest api and our ui um, gauge here we had the webcam and now we want to take a look at tables so if you get some data we will speak about how to get the data again last time we used an api you can put this in a table but you need to install that makes it a little bit easier at least the table uh, node which is existing here in node red so the node ui table and when you take a look at the help, I opened the help already, you will find some examples here. So first of all, in the dashboard, you find the table node and um, you can use the table node now to visualize table based objects. So the object must have some format. So I opened what comes out of Pegel Online currently and you can't connect this directly and we will first use the example now to understand how this is working. We just take the trigger now, but we will first copy in our function node the example from this page here. And there's an example here with example data. And you will see it's an array based of two elements. And then each element has a keyword, which must be the same in each array. And uh, then it is a simple table. Uh, and when we um, set the payload to this content here, or to this array, Okay, you need to define, of course, where the table should be in your UI groups. So I take one here, the webcam or the Pagel online is not important. And we take a look on our dashboard. We see that the table is there, but it's pretty small, so I can't read what's in there. So I'll go back to layout and I increase the width for this group. And I again unlock 
the auto so, um, size because this is not working always and now we have a fixed size. Okay, and we see the example data and um, it is set to auto means all columns have the same size and everything is done automatically. Of course we can give it a name if this is necessary or if you would like that. And now let's take a look how to put some own data in and that's pretty easy. You just simply change the key because currently the key is also the label and then we define our payload in this case we take the timestamp from our Pagel Online API input we take the level which is the value of our payload currently so the message payload value and let's take another one let's take um, yeah, the trend for example and we enter again a uh, name. So this name is currently also the uh, label, as I said. So you should pay attention how you write it, how you spell it. And that's it. And I just take one element because there is no other one currently in this answer. If you have more information, you can put a second array element on top. And now we get the information uh, which we see above as well, but with some more content. And of course, we can also try to make a direct connection because it, this is already a JSON object. Let's, let's try this, but it's empty. So why? The only reason is that this is a table and it needs an array. So if there's a second row, so when we, and this is easy now, we take our existing uh, payload and we just put it on a temp uh, variable and then we create an array which is empty. So our payload is now an empty array and then in the first element, so zero because it starts with zero, we put our temp element. So the, the change is really a minimum, it's nearly the same and when you take a look the complete table is there with all the elements. Now the disadvantage is maybe we don't want to have some of the columns. But there is a way which we can, and we can maybe want to change also the size of the columns. And there's a way if you uh, edit this node and then you need to use the keywords and now you can define a new title. So this keyword is now just used to identify it here. You can define a new title. Then only this column will be shown uh, which is selected. So when I go back there again, you see there's just one column now. I can add another column and now I can decide which columns of my table should be shown. So let's take the value here and put a new uh, label or title in. And you can also define the width of the columns. And it is possible in pixel or also in percentages. Uh, when you just enter 60, then I think it's pixel, so it's much too small here. So we go back and change this now to percentage that we say the timestamp should be 60% and then value and trend need uh, to share the remaining one. So 20-20% um, are left and that's it. So you have now everything you need uh, to create the dashboard itself. Everything what I did on my dashboard here, um, you can create this now on your own. There's one thing left which you might need to know, and this is how to get some data if the data is not available on a REST API or you have the data already, then it's sometimes a little bit tricky to get uh, data from an internet page like we grabbed it from uh, this table here. This was our uh, REST API, in this case from Open Weather Maps. But when you take a look at the table above, this one is from BSH, that's the German Institute, and they don't have any API, they just have this page here. So it's an HTML page. In the meantime, I found out they also have an FTP um, text file available. But at the beginning, I just knew about this HTML page. And now the question is how to get this data because I wanted to create an email alert also. So I need really this pure data and I wanted to put it in my own table, not just copy this table. And the only chance here is to analyze the HTML page and try to get out the content of this table. And I was just interested in one column. So let's see how I did this. 
Again, we will use a HTTP request node because you can also grab an HTML page with that. You simply get a long string with the HTML content. So I take the debug node that we can see the output of this and I will just simply copy the path to the BSH site uh, into the URL here. And then we would get a string. We will see this now. Let's just give it a name so that we know what this is for and we deploy it and we will see a long string. So that's a long HTML page string and now you have to look for some interesting tags to divide this. So I saw that diff and uh, p and so on are interesting tags here and um, there is a parser node available which is called HTML and you can use this one by defining a selector which is for example a headline or uh, the diff tag or what else is existing uh, to split the node and get rid of some other data or split the message not the node and let's take p so i tried already several and i decide to get more than one message if there's more than one section so I will get now two messages back. One is not so important for us. We can throw this away. But the first one is interesting. Here is already reduced nearly on our table the content we are looking for. And now we will see that there are some other selectors in to get even uh, more down to our interesting data. I tried several ways and the best one in this case was to use two selectors uh, for the same message. One is uh, the, for the tables. Um, and in this case, we just take one message in an array so that we have uh, only one message left. And also div was an, an important tag and selector in this case. Because we want to work at the end with one single message, we uh, need to join this later, but let's first take a look if this is working and when we apply this one we get some messages and one is an array message and there we see all the values and the message so here are the values of the table and even for each column already one array and here you see the headlines and I, now I show you the what I, else what I did but already finalized so I get rid of all empty messages so that uh, I don't have to take care about that. And then I join the existing messages and I know that it's always two messages. And then I simply take the payload of some arrays and put it uh, on my keywords and get this table. But as you can see, it's not uh, linked anymore because I found out that there is an FTP server existing or BHA told me that. And now I just get a, a text file and instead of dealing with the HTML, which can be changed, and then my whole uh, solution is not working anymore, I download the file and I put it to a function node. And here I use some substring uh, methods to get the right content in my table. And then I also use an email alert um, based on some levels to inform me if the level of the water is too high or too low. So this is now not in detail because uh, our time is almost over, but that you get an idea how to work with tables and also how to yeah, um, grab some data from HTML page or FTP uh, and to put it to a table or to an alert, an email alert. All right, that it uh, is in a nutshell how to yeah, create your dashboard with all the tools I explained. I think you can now continue and have some fun with Node-RED and your own birth dashboard. See you on the next one. <laughs>